It seems everywhere I look, there's ads about touchscreens and miniatures. However, there's very few resources on how to do this yourself. The reason is, is that touchscreen integration into the TTRPG hobby is a relatively new frontier, but getting your own touchscreen is really only the first step. Once you have one, well then what? Well, that's what this video and the next few are really meant to answer. And it all starts here, touchscreen setup and calibration. Hello, my name is Tom Tobar and welcome to Level Up Crafting. In my last video, I went into detail on how to build your very own digital game board with touchscreen support for $420. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the following next steps. Basic computer setup and touchscreen calibration. Now I know these subjects are not wildly entertaining, but they are completely necessary. All the best tools in the world mean nothing if you don't set things up correctly. If you find this video to be helpful, please take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button down in the bottom. As a new creator, it makes a huge difference for the future of this channel. There are a number of touchscreen options available on the market today. In my last video, I used this touchscreen sensor to convert my regular TV game board into a touchscreen. This frame is equipped with a single USB connection that acts both as a power supply and as a data input into the computer. Now, before we get plugging this thing in, let's talk briefly about a regular non-touchscreen game board and its setup. This is super important to talk about because it's going to drastically impact how we set up our touchscreen, which in turn impacts the softwares that we plan to use on it. For the most part, there are two different methods for setting up a regular digital game board. The first method is a one computer setup. In this method, I connect a digital game board into my main Game Master computer with an HDMI cord. Then I go to my computer display settings and turn on the multiple display support. This means when I use softwares like Dynamic Dungeons, I can have my Game Master screen display all my amazing Game Master tools like Fog of War and other hidden items. And on my second monitor, which is really my game board, I can show a clean output to my players. The second method is a two computer setup. One computer will run the Game Master tools and the other computer will run all of my player tools. This is a common setup for people using internet-based mapping systems like Foundry VTT. Now let's talk about these methods when I start plugging in my touchscreen support. The first and most important thing to realize is that a touchscreen utilizes the same technology and functionality as a regular mouse. Basically, a touchscreen is just really a fancy mouse. Because of this, there's no way to currently limit one mouse with one monitor and one mouse with another monitor all on one computer. This means that method one, where I'm using a digital game board as a second monitor, will not work with a touchscreen at all. The reason is, is that both screens will be fighting over control over that mouse. Even when my players are not actively using the game board, I'll still be competing with the places that the miniatures are placed because of the laser's interaction with that monitor. The only way to use a touchscreen on a digital game board is to have a two computer setup. Now you don't need an overly powerful computer to run your player computer. For the most versatility, I would recommend getting a computer with at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a dedicated graphics card. If you have at least that, you should be in pretty good shape. Now, whenever anybody talks about computers, there's always a lot of debate about the different options and suggestions that someone would make. In the end, it all comes down to preference and about the softwares that you plan to use. If you plan to only use Foundry VTT, for example, you might be able to get away with running your whole setup using a Raspberry Pi 5, which would be super cool and pretty cheap. On the other hand, if you wanted to use softwares like Arkenforge, you won't be able to get away with a standard Raspberry Pi. My suggestion here is to look at the requirements of the softwares that you plan to use, and then look up the requirements for that software. For me, I use a Belkin 8th generation. Currently, this is no longer available, and so I'll put some links in the description about some computers that I would suggest that are about the equivalent of what I'm using. Do you have a suggestion on a computer that you would use that's not very expensive? Go ahead and put your suggestion in the comments below. 
I'll take some of those comments and place them into the description of this video. That way you'll know what the community suggests on the computers that they plan to use. Once you've selected your player computer, we want to be able to connect everything so it has the most flexibility possible. The reason for this is that each software utilizes the computer's HDMI connections in different and often complex ways. If you prepare your setup using these instructions, you should be able to run your computer with touchscreen support regardless of which software you plan to use. You'll also be able to turn off your touchscreen and just use a regular digital game board if you decide to use that using these instructions. First, my TV game board has two HDMI inputs, so I'll run my first input into my Game Master computer and the second input into my player computer. If your TV only has one HDMI input, you can use a manual switcher like this one to switch between the Game Master computer control and the player computer control. With all this added, I'm going to be plugging in my touchscreen USB into the player computer. I'm going to be adding this on-off switch to the touchscreen as well. I'm doing this because the player computer that I'm using, I use for other things as well. And I want the ability to turn off the touchscreen and use just a regular mouse when I'm not actively running a game. If your player computer is farther away from your game board like mine is, you might also want to consider getting a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. That way you can have a lot more control when you need it. Once you've connected all the HDMI cables and the touchscreen, you'll most likely need to calibrate your computer and in some cases, the TV as well. To start, make sure that the TV game board has the input to your player screen activated. Start by opening the control panel and selecting hardware and software. If the touchscreen is connected correctly, then the pen and touch category and the tablet PC settings should be activated. If something isn't connected correctly, then these categories will not be displayed. Select the calibrate screen for pen and touch input under the tablet PC settings. On this new pop-up, you should see the calibrate button in the middle of the screen. Once selected, you should see the blue box with a nice thick inch or so of white space around it. If you can see this white border clearly, then go ahead and continue with the calibration. If you do not see this white space, or that it's maybe just a sliver of a white space, then that might mean that you need to go into your TV settings and adjust the picture. To fix this, I'm gonna go into the TV settings and look for the picture settings. What you're looking for is the overscan and the aspect ratio options. If the overscan is on, it will zoom in the display just a little bit, which will throw off your touchscreen calibration. If you also have the zoom, wide, or cinema options selected, it only makes this calibration even worse. With the overscan off, I'm ready to complete my touchscreen calibration. Notice that I'm using a pencil to calibrate my settings because it is thinner and more accurate than, well, my big old fingers. With the calibration complete, you should be all set to use your new touchscreen setup. In the end, I hope this video has helped you set up your new touchscreen digital game board. Check out my next video where I'll be going into detail about the software side of things. Until then, I wish you the very best of luck in all of your adventures, and I'll see you next time when we level up our crafting together.